The opinions expressed in this show are the views of the host and not necessarily that of WTRW, 94.3 The Talker, or the Bold Gold Media Group. The following presentation is brought to you by the host of the program who is solely responsible for its content. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make a Change. I'm your host, Terry Martin, along with my producer, Tom Jenkins. Good afternoon, Terry. Well, good afternoon, Tom. You know, our show is always about how to make changes, and of course, that's the name of our show. And that's why today we have Angela Callahan on, because she has such a wonderful no-quitting attitude with many obstacles that she's had to deal with, including MS. I'm sure there was a lot of changes she she needed to make throughout her life to get to the point where she's at today. Yes, and so Angela, why don't you begin with telling us about, you say, your attitude, especially as a kid, and how you say you're so, you are, you're so real, and nothing comes out fake. You say it how it is. Yes, I'm, I've always been, uh, sometimes it's been a hindrance as I've grown up, and sometimes, you know, it, more often than not, it's a good thing. Um, I tell it like it is. You can read exactly my expressions on my face because I'm an open book. Uh, not always a good thing, but I try to be real about things because, you know, I, I don't appreciate when people are fake. It doesn't help me get through my day any easier. That's for sure. Um, that's usually rare in women, too. <laughs> you guys are cryptic, man. <laughs> Especially. How, are you OK, hon? I'm fine. Yeah. You don't seem fine. I'm OK. No, no, you're not. <laughs> well, there are days I'm still cryptic, especially with my husband, but that's OK. <laughs> but mostly I really try to be real. And uh, I just think that's important for everyone. I, I, I don't like lying and, you know, trying to tell people stories of, you know, untruth. It's mm-hmm. not it's not worth it. And I love also how you have, uh, when, when you were talking to me about in your interview, your compassion that you have now. And I think by the end of the show, everyone will understand where that compassion really led you. But let's just now talk about what happened on 317 of 99, the one of the longest days of your life. Um, that was um, St. Patrick's Day, actually, of 99. Um, I was working full time as an executive assistant at um, a local telephone company. And I had, for about a week and a half, had pain in my right eye um, and couldn't see very well out of it. And it definitely deteriorated over that week and a half. And I thought, well, I must have gotten something in my eye. Um, Who knows when I'm outside playing with my daughter or whatever at the time. Uh, But I got to the point where something scared me. For some reason, I decided, you know what, I need to go to an appointment right now. I need to get my eye looked at because there's something wrong. Um, Made the appointment went right down, sat with the doctor, I'll never forget his name, and the, what he looked like, and the office, everything. It, it's, you know. That scary it's, moment. Yeah, Horrible. it's in my brain, uh, inscribed forever. Uh, went in, he did all of his exams, I took my contacts out, he did everything he could. He left, and I'm sitting there all alone, I'm sitting there in this room, and I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? I, you know, There's gotta be something bad in my eye. Uh, he came back in. And he sat down at his desk and he's writing and he just, he turned to me and he said, I don't know how to tell you this, but I have to tell you, you have MS. And I said, what are you talking about? I'm here for my eye. I don't understand what that you're saying. A, that's amazing. And he said, you have what we call optic neuritis. It is um, absolutely one of the biggest telltale signs of MS. And you have that going on right now and you need to seek treatment. And I'm sorry. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And immediately I was, you know, I was crying. I had a very, very difficult time. I was, I thought he was telling me I had muscular dystrophy because I didn't know what MS was. I Mm -hmm. had no idea. I thought of Annette Fiducello and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to deal with everything she's been dealing with for all these years. And I, it scared me. I called work and said, I'm not coming back. I have to figure out what's going on. Called my family physician He was, he's a friend of ours. And he said to me, you know, I don't, I'm so sorry. I will call ahead to uh, Robert Packer hospital and you need to go right up there and they will take great care of you. And I said, okay. So that's where I went. And I was there for three days. Where where is that hospital? Robert Packer hospital is in Sarah, uh, Pennsylvania. It's up uh, near the, near the New York border. Okay. It's a very fantastic hospital. So I went up there and had a fabulous neurologist did every 
tests possible on me. I had steroids every six hours around the clock because that at the time when you have what they call an exacerbation, any issues like that, uh, they give you steroids, heavy doses of steroids to fix the problem. So for three days, that's kind of what I did. And they said, well, we can't confirm that you have MS. We think that that's what it is. But at that time, and, and it's only 99, but at that time, they still had questions mm -hmm. about what MS really truly was. Uh, they did the, um, the spinal tap, the lumbar puncture, which was awful. And I, I thought after that I would never have an epidural if I ever had any more kids ever again because that was an awful experience. I didn't like it. Uh, thank goodness with that, they take some of your uh, central spinal fluid and they look at that and see if the disease is in your central nervous system, which it was not, thank God. But... You know, from there, I just kind of, I had decisions that I had to make. I uh, had to decide medicine. I had to decide, you know, stress levels. Uh, stress is definitely an exacerbation of MS, which who doesn't have stress in their life? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Angela, could you explain now what actually is MS? Because everyone doesn't know. MS is basically, the easiest way to explain it is your body is attacking itself. Uh, your nervous system is being attacked by your immune system. And there are around, if you think about it like a wire, you know how there are coatings on wires? Mm -hmm. Your body is chewing on those wires, on the plastic covering that's covering those wires. The insulation of the yes, wires. Yes, the insulation. Mm -hmm. And it's eating into your wires. And every time it hits the wire, it zaps it. And something goes wrong. Something is an exacerbation. Uh, they have not figured out how to stop that process. There are medicines out there. I've been on several. Uh, that slow the process, that make things a little bit better, but ultimately there's no cure. So it can strike at any time. You can be fine. You can. Are the symptoms only in your eyes? Or no. Does it bother your body? No, there are, and there are definitely different types. There's relapsing remitting MS, which make, means it comes and goes. There, um, and then there are two other versions, which basically are you know people have problems every day, all the time. So. I will. I do have relapsing remitting. Uh, I think that the way I deal with things makes it a lesser version of it because I don't give into it like some people do. Um, the the form that I have is you know I've had eye issues. I've had optic neuritis in both eyes actually. I've had loss of. I don't, it's not loss of mobility in my legs, but I had a few years where I had basically a, it's like I fell asleep on my legs and the tingling sensation, of both legs for a long time. It just didn't go away. I could still walk. I could still run. It just was a, a very weird sensation. I have had uh, what they call foot drop in, I think my right eye, my right foot. Uh, they give you a special boot to kind of help that. And basically what that is, is your foot just you can't keep it in a position. It kind of just keeps dropping. I have had different things with my arms, just sensations where I, I just didn't have the strength. Uh, and every single time I go for an appointment, they test your eyes, they test your, your hand strength, your uh, motor skills. And it's, you know, my fine motor skills definitely have suffered, but I still crochet and I still do little things with my kids that, you know, it's fun. And speaking of your kids, you say uh, you had two little girls at that time. Yes. And they were really needing you. But on top of that, you were in a very unhappy marriage. Yes. And that was looming over your head on top of your sickness. And then I guess at that point, your husband didn't know how to or didn't know how to yeah, handle? Yeah, he was not sympathetic. He was in the first two weeks. Uh, and then he, I'll never forget the first day that I decided, okay, I'm going to take medicine for this. It was an every other day injection uh, on one of the drugs that were called the ABC drugs. And if anyone knows about MS, there are three drugs, uh, Avonex, Beta Seron, and Copaxone that are the ABC drugs. This one was the Beta Seron. It was an every other day injection. And it caused, it, of course, it was pain because you're doing an injection. Uh, and the day that you took it, you were okay, but the next day you had really depression symptoms. That didn't help me when I'm in an unhappy divorce and didn't know where to turn. The day that I started my injection, my then husband said to me, I cannot watch this, this is disgusting, and he left. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow, thank you. Because now I know what I need to do. Because mm -hmm. that, that was it, that was all I needed. That was the push that, that made me get out of there. Mm -hmm. And know that I needed something better than that. I deserve better than that. 
So I did that actual drug for about two years. I hated every minute of it. It was awful. Switched to a different drug, which was better, less symptoms, but it was an everyday injection. So then you're dealing with all that different pain um, because you only have certain spaces, certain areas on your body where you can inject it, the back of your, both of your arms, your stomach and your thighs, um, which is not fun. <laughs> it hurts. Well, and, and so through all of this, you're going through a divorce mm-hmm. and you're sick mm-hmm. and you're working besides. Full time. Yep. Full time. And then you had to find a home. Yep. And at that point, what did your attorney say to you? My attorney said to me, you know, you, you really should go, amongst other things, you should get alimony, you should get child support, you should get all this stuff. And I said, I don't want any of it. The only thing I want is to get out and be happy with my kids. He said, you need to find a house that is as close to what you had as possible so that your girls are growing, knowing, you know, comfort and they're not put out by this whole thing. So I did. I found a house uh, through friends, people that were trying to sell their house for several years, but they didn't have it on the market anymore. And I went to them and said, I, you know, I'm looking for a house. And, and they said, OK, well, we need to find a house. And I said, well, I have a house for you, actually, because I love this house, but I can't afford it. So I'd like to buy your house and you can buy that house. And that's actually what happened. <laughs> so it worked out. But um, and this house was great. I lived there for five years with my girls and it was fabulous. It was, you know, a struggle, but it was it was OK. It was happy and healthy and and good to be mine well, at that time you say it was a 60 40 split with the children mm-hmm. but you were going now I, i'm not quite understanding you were going to king's college were you doing that besides working besides yes. ms besides the yes drugs? yes <laughs> i started besides, besides. in 2000 i started uh school because the people that i worked with pushed me they said you know you really should go get a degree and i said i know but you know how am i going to do that i have two kids and this and that and they said well you know what tomorrow if you don't if you didn't start school today you know what tomorrow's going to be and i said no and they said it's just a day that you didn't start school like why 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 wait so i said okay so i started and that was in december of 2000 i believe started school i did weekends and and nights that my kids were not with me, that they were with their dad, which is why I say the 60-40 split. So the 40% of the time that they were with their dad, that's when I did uh, school. And just struggled through that. You know, it, it, I had a plan for what I thought I wanted to, to do. I got about three years into it and said, yeah, this is not the plan that I want. I don't want to go for an accounting degree anymore. And um, so I said to the advisor, you know, what do I do? I need to stop somewhere and I don't want to just quit because that would not be worth anything. So I stopped with an associate's degree in business administration because then I had somewhere to go from there. Um, finished that in 2005. So, you know, five years to take an, an associate's degree was a long time. But again, it's one day a week and every other Saturday or whatever. It was it was tough, but it was worth it. I, I just sit here really amazed because so many people don't have all of that going on and they, they're just afraid to step out. and. You were not afraid. You just kept on going when, uh, when I you didn't even feel good. Yeah, most of the time. And then that scare was looming over your head. But the way I hear you, you didn't let that loom over your head. You didn't. You don't wake up every day. No, that, that's what I, you were talking about earlier. I have, for some reason, I, I don't really know if it's part of how we're born or raised or what. But I have a drive in me that just it doesn't allow me to quit. Uh, I have three sisters and they were all in school. You know, they all did the regular track. They all went to school after high school. And I said, boy, you know, yes, I do have two beautiful children. And I went the route I went and I was happy. But I always felt like I missed out. I should have, you know, I should have gone to school. I should have done it. Not that I regret my life. I don't. But I knew that I wanted to have a degree like my sisters. I felt sort of competitive a little bit Mm -hmm. so that's why you know one of the reasons why i went um so that was that was part of it that's a really good spot to take a quick break okay all right you are listening to make a change on 94.3 fm the talker i'm tom jenkins with your host terry martin we'll be right back confidence it's something we all search for it's something we all strive for when we're confident we feel we can accomplish anything and think about it when you knew you looked good you walked with your head held a little higher Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. 
They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedaryClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I'm Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin. And our special guest in studio today is Angela Callahan. Angela, thank you so much for coming in and doing the show this morning, thank or this afternoon, much. rather. Uh, very grateful for that. And just in that first segment, you've been through so much in such a short time. You know, walking into an eye doctor's appointment and then within, what, a year? Divorce, new house, going for an education, plus a full-time job. How did you do all of that? <laughs> like, what was going through your mind or or what gave you the drive? Like, what got you out of bed in the morning to say, you know, what, I'm going to do this again today, no matter how many needles I got to stick in my body? Yeah, my kids. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted them to see that it could be done. Uh, choosing the path that I chose to have them, to raise them, I wanted them to have all the things that I thought they deserved. And in order to do that, I had to push myself. And through the years, you know, they have both said to me, wow, we, you know, we love what you've done because that helped us, that, that shows us what people can do. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't easy. It was never easy. But I also had my family support. I, you know, my mother always pushed me um, in a good way. You know, I grew up on a farm, so we always had chores. We always had all this stuff to do. And we didn't have, I, I was thinking about it the other day, we didn't have lists of, oh, this is what everybody's expected to do. It's just in the way that we were talked to every day, the way that things had to happen. And we just knew we had jobs to do where it, it kind of pushed me. So I knew then there was always work, work, get all the stuff done. And then I could have actually time to relax and play. So through this whole thing, I guess I felt to myself, I really have to work at this and get this done because then I can sit back and say, okay, I did it. And my kids are going to see that and be happy and appreciative of all the things that they have. I have a big question. (laughs) Where was Angela's time to play now? (laughs) Relax and play. It didn't seem like there was very much time. No, I didn't. But uh, it was okay. I my time to relax and play was when I took them to the park or when I played with them. I just sat and watched them. And and knowing that they were so happy is is all I needed. And it was tough because anybody that's gone through divorce, uh, the first thing that people say is, how could you do that? You have kids. How can you get divorced? That's crazy. And I said, well, wait a minute. That's why I'm getting divorced. Because I don't want my kids growing up in what would have been. It, it was not healthy in any way. And I didn't want them to grow up like that because that would have changed who they were. And I wanted them to be the happy little girls that they were. So it was important for me to get out. And it was the only way I think I, I could have kept going forward. Well, being on your own now and so much was resting on your shoulders, including your health, then you had to adopt, you said, a, a healthy, you know, the healthy eating habits. And you adopted the swank S-W-A-N-K, swank diet. What is that? Uh, When I first found out I had MS, I had been given a book called uh, The Swank Diet. It was, the doctor actually is Dr. Swank. I don't uh, unfortunately know his first name, but it's an entire book that he wrote about MS. The first half of the book is all about MS and what it does to the body and what to expect and and kind of things like that. The whole second half of the book is a recipe book. It's a diet book. It's how to care for your body. Um, I've done that. I, I took it very literally in the very beginning. I did it, I followed it to a T. Swank diet is basically for the first year that you start this diet, you are to have no red meat at all. Nothing. Red meat, your body has to work very, very hard to digest red meats. Mm-hmm. So the whole idea was give your body healthy foods, healthy things that it can digest easily because you, you're fighting a disease that, that your body needs every, every ounce of strength for. So why work on digestion as part of that? You need that strength for the, for the MS piece. So stay away from the red meat. Stay away from fat. Well, that's really tough in this day. Uh, even milk, um, butter, anything like that. I used to make my own butter. Gross, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to make my own you know mayonnaise products because you know you need certain things in food. So 
I kind of, I, this diet book has everything. My favorite recipe in the whole book is the sugar cookie recipe. Love them. And it's not to stay away from sugar. And obviously, you know, there are good carbs and bad carbs, but it is to eat less of things. It is to watch every single thing that you're purchasing. And the saturated fat in, in food should never be more than two grams. And if you ever look at any food in the uh, grocery store, it is hard to find. Peanut butter is about the only thing that is acceptable because it is three or three and a half grams of fat, I think, per serving. But uh, a saturated fat, that is. It's like 16 grams of fat per serving. But peanut butter is good. That's a good fat to have. So you have to really pay attention. When you go to the grocery store, it takes me an hour and a half to go through because I'm reading everything. I'm reading everything now about staying away from high fructose corn syrup. Oh, exactly. And it's hard sure. to find. It's mm-hmm. really is. It's in everything. It's hidden. It is. So you really, it's, it's a process. It took me a long time. And boy, did I lose a lot of weight real fast because I just stayed away from all of that stuff. And I couldn't believe the change in, that it made. It made me feel great. I'm surprised that he had a recipe in there with sugar for sugar cookies. Yep. You, uh, because it, of sugar. Mm-hmm. But it's, I used like organic sugar, uh, sugar that was not processed as, as, you know, much as white pure cane sugar is today. And oil they want you to use oils so the sugar cookie recipe had oil in it actually instead of butter there was Mm -hmm. no you know and of course now i'm sure you've all heard that you can use applesauce in things and and different variations Mm -hmm. and that's what i did and my kids didn't notice Mm -hmm. they didn't notice a change as kids they were thinking oh it still tastes great so that's that's fabulous but for me i noticed a huge change i felt much better and it was fabulous. And it was basically picking up where I had grown up. Because as I said, I lived on a farm. And growing up basically organically, we grew up on a dairy farm where our dairy cows were never given antibiotics or anything like that. They were grass-fed. And we grew up with huge gardens every single year. So fresh vegetables and fruits and everything. And I thought, wow, you know, I grew up like that. Why am I not going back to that? That's, that was important. That's it. That's the key. And you had to make a change to go back. It's not easy. With everything that's out there that is just easy to buy off the shelves, already pre-made and pre-done and pre-cooked. But it just, it does take commitment. But it does feel much better. Seems like everything we hear anymore, that not just that you're trying to say, well, you're going to become a health food nut, whatever way they want to call it. But if you watch TV, that's what they're saying all the time, bringing out all these uh commercials about anything that's healthy but basically they're trying to get us all to go back to vegetables and fruits and yeah and stop with the processed food exactly it's causing trouble in every cell of our body yeah i mean i grew up with uh the fresh milk right out of the bulk tank on the farm before it was sent away to be processed i mean what better way to grow up how awesome Mm -hmm. it was spectacular now i probably could never drink that now (laughs) because i'm not used to that anymore but you know and actually thinking about that i thought how did i get ms you know i grew up as organically as a kid could but it's not about that it's it's my nervous system it's not about you know anything i was given or taken Supposedly, they do they do try to tie it into different vaccines or viruses that you could have contracted, but you know I don't know if they'll ever find out what it truly is from. So they don't know how it started and they don't know how to cure it. No. So it took you five years to get an associate's degree. You said yes. And what was the associate's degree in? Business administration. And are you working with business administration today? No, I <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I knew that it was a good place to stop. That's why I kind of said I need some place good to stop. That if I ever do decide to pick up again, that's an easy place for me to pick up. I went to my my second daughter was in preschool at the time. She was uh, invited to a birthday party in Scranton. And at the time, that was 40 minutes from me. And I thought, this is crazy. I'm not, it's a birthday party on February 1st in in an indoor pool. I'm not taking her while her father promised her. And I thought, great. You know, I know she's in preschool, but how how do I break this kid's heart? So packed my kids up and there I went. And I sat at the table while they swam and I did homework. That's what I did. And this man sat next to me and he was reading the paper. And he kept talking to me and I'd say like, I don't know why this guy's talking to me. Like there's nothing interesting, interesting in me that this person's talking to me. I don't understand because mm. I'm, I'm studying, I'm, you know, watching my kids and whatever. Uh, he, 
he just kept talking to me for two and a half hours, asking me about me, asking me about, you know, what I was learning and all this stuff. And here I packed my kids up and I left. And I remember that entire weekend thinking I felt wonderful. I felt like, wow, here's a person that actually was talking to me about me, wanting to know about me. That's never happened to me before. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, And it was exciting. And I remember going to work and saying to this one girl who had a bad relationship, I said, there's a guy I met, you'd love him. Not thinking of myself, I don't know why. Until about a week later, I thought, what an idiot I am. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I think I better revisit this. Um, so, you know, it was probably June by the time I actually saw him again. And I actually, our, our children had gone to the same birthday party. That's, how, that's why he was there. Mm-hmm. Our kids were also in the same dance company, which I didn't know until June, till the recital. So we met up again. And I you said. You didn't switch numbers that day? I didn't. Oh, he no, he did. He gave me his number. He ripped off, and the, this is the only reason why I remember what day it was because he ripped off the top of his Citizens Voice paper with February first, two thousand and three, and his phone number and his name on it, and I have it somewhere still. Uh, but that's the only reason why I remember what day it was. So you never called it. I didn't call you never him. Called him. I was actually in sort of a relationship, and I said to him, "I can't do anything right now because I've got to get out of what I'm in before I do anything else." And it took me a month and a half or so. And then I thought, eh, I'm sure he's moved on by now. And so I didn't call him until June when I saw him again. And he handed me a business card walking down into the auditorium. He said, call me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I did, I, you know, and, and we, we just, there was such a connection. And I mean, actually today's my eight year anniversary with him. So. Well, congratulations. Anniversary. Yeah. So it worked out, but um, it, I said to him, I want to go back to school. And he said to me, okay, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I, I really, you're going to kill me because this is crazy, but I want to be a nurse. I said, I've always wanted to be a nurse. I remember in high school and I don't know what ever made me forget that, but I want to be a nurse. And he said, absolutely. That's awesome. Go for it. And I looked at him and I said, are you kidding me? Because nobody has ever really said to me, go for it, do it. I only got resistance when I was in high school. People said, why would you want to work those hours? You're crazy. And I said, okay, because I'm 18 years old and okay. Mm-hmm. So I didn't do it. Uh, and he said, do it. So I started Misericordia University that, f- that summer, I think it was. And again, it took me, you know, four and a half years because I didn't just go for my nursing degree. I decided to be a little more crazy and go for my bachelor's degree as well. Mm-hmm. So I went for my BSN. Wow. And talk about ambition. <laughs> again, through weekends, through nights, I was in the, you know, working full time, still had my girls. We got married. We bought a house. I decided I wanted another baby before it was too late for me because <laughs> I was getting older. Uh, and so I got pregnant and going through school, you know, and, had and him. That wasn't a good idea, they thought, for your right. health. MS wise, you, it's not a good idea to have more children because basically that pulls you into, uh, you know, exacerbations. It, when you deliver your child in that very first six months of, of post-delivery is a very trying time for your body. It's very stressful doing the, going through delivery. It's very stressful your body absorbing everything that it's done for the past nine months. It's, it's tough. And I just, it didn't matter to me. Talk about a no quitting attitude. <laughs> she was... That's what I wanted. Not quitting in anything. And you haven't. No. Nope. And that's another great spot to take another short break. You are listening to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker, with our special guest, Angela Callahan. And uh, I am Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin. We'll be right back. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Medary Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medari Clinicals. 
and we're back on Make a Change with your host, Terry Martin. I'm Tom Jenkins on 94.3 FM The Talker. Our special guest today, Angela Callahan, dealing with MS, a divorce, raising two little girls, going back to school for business. I'm tired listening to you. <laughs> and she <laughs> you did are, it all. amazing. I mean, this is just amazing. And uh, you meet a new man. You end up getting married. You tell him that you want to go back to be a nurse. Yep. Now, during this whole time, you know, raising your girls, uh, getting pregnant, um, having another baby, getting married, back to all of this stuff, what's going on with your MS? I mean, is it is it, I don't want to say remission, or are you still dealing with, with symptoms or issues with it, or what was going on with that? Um, during that whole time, I had little things here, uh, here and there. They call them, like I said before, exacerbations when you have an issue with MS. I would have little things. I did have optic neuritis a couple of different times in my left eye, I want to say, a couple of times with uh, the legs and the drop foot, whatever. I would just go and get steroids for it. It's like a three-day course, or I would be on prednisone, which is, if anybody's ever been on prednisone, it's a, it's a difficult drug to be on because you are you start at a high dose and then you taper down to nothing, but it's a 15-day course, and that's a tough thing for your body. You don't sleep. Uh, so I kind of went through that a couple of different times. When I found out I was pregnant or when I, we were trying to get pregnant, I, I actually went off of all medication because it wasn't it's not proven to be safe for a baby. Mm-hmm. So I went off of everything. And I was probably out for a few months before I got pregnant. And then obviously during my whole pregnancy, I was not on anything. And then after I had him, I kind of said to myself, I'm going to see how long this rides out where I don't have to be on any medication because I don't like it. Mm -hmm. It's not Mm -hmm. fun. I don't want to do self injections anymore. It's awful. It just hurts. And it's not, I don't know. It was a lot of work. So I actually went, I want to say almost three years without anything. Wow. I would do steroid maintenance per se every month or every other month, which is basically one hour infusion once a month, just kind of for a maintenance to keep my body at, you know, the MS at bay. And then I I got tired of that too. Mm -hmm. I said, oh geez, this is, you know, steroids. I don't know what that's doing to my body. Right now it's okay, but in years to come, I have no idea what I'm gonna have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I said, "I, I, I don't wanna do this either. So I quit that. And, you know, my doctor said to me, you're crazy. You absolutely positively, you're getting older. You need to be on something. And I just said, I, but I'm good. I feel good. I don't want to be on anything. Mm-hmm. You were still doing the healthy diet. Too, yes. Correct? Yeah. I mean, definitely. I don't follow the swing diet like I did initially. But the whole idea of that diet is to initially, you know, for the first year, follow it to a T. And then, you know, you can taper. I do cheat once in a while. I do have some Oreos once in a while. I have a Snickers bar. But mostly I really try to follow it. And I buy things that are, you know, healthy and I do all that. Um, But still, stress, as I said before, is a huge factor of MS. And when you have stress, and everybody does, it just is a matter of time before your body breaks down. Uh, And that's what exactly happened. Uh, It's probably over a year and a half ago already, which has actually flown by. I had uh, what I call the wonky eyeball. (laughs) And... (laughs) It's funny because I freaked everybody out that I worked with. It was fabulous. (laughs) It was a great way to get back at people. (laughs) I love it. She takes this illness, MS, and a symptom and uses it in her favor. Yeah. This is great. (laughs) This is great. And basically what that was is my left eye decided to completely go immobile. I could see out of it, but it would not move at all. So talk about difficulty driving. I was, you know, face turned to the right driving you know, sideways basically with my face because I couldn't see clearly straight ahead. Uh, you know, and, and to look at someone, my eye would just stay. So if I looked to the left, my eye just stayed. And so people would just get totally freaked out. And it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Except for my patients, because then I tried very hard to not let them see it because I didn't want them to be, you know, thinking I was some deranged lunatic. So <laughs> I'm glad you said that. My patients. Yes. So- did you complete the, the, the complete yes, nursing program? Yes, I did. Um, it took me, like I said, about four and a half years. And December, wait, when was it? Uh, August of 2010, I completed my nursing degree, my BSN. And it was it was just such a great feeling. And my kids were all at my graduation and my husband, of course. And it was just a fabulous day. Now the next thing I had to do was pass the boards. And that was really awful. I mean, nursing school is very, very difficult. And... 
because there's just so many things that, you know, our, our bodies are crazy. We, there's so many things to learn. And I, of course, there's tons of things that I still need to learn. So the boards were the next uh, thing that I had to accomplish. And that's a very difficult thing. I decided to take them pretty quickly after I graduated because I, I was afraid that if I didn't, I might not pass them. So I did go in and you have four hours to complete this online test. You have a total of 265 questions that were possibly given to you. And you could stop. It, what, what happens is you take the test and you, you answer every question. And it kind of, if you, there are like four levels of questions. If you pass the first level, it takes you to the second level. If you get to the second level and you miss several questions, it kind of takes you backwards to the first level. But you never know this. You have no idea what it's doing. So I went through and took all four hours and took all 265 questions. And I thought, no, I didn't pass that. I didn't. There's no way I passed it. Even the simplest questions I got stuck on, and I thought, oh, I was so Did mad. you find out right then that no. you didn't? No. Oh. Now, it is a lot different because years ago, you had to actually be uh, told through the mail if you passed or not. So it's not like that anymore, thank goodness. So you took basically about two days is what you had to wait. So I remember leaving that test, and, and the, girl at the, the woman at the desk said to me, you know, is that your son outside? And I said, my son? No. I, no, I didn't bring anybody with me. And she goes, and she said, well, look through the window. She's like, isn't that your son and your husband? And I said, oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> so I went outside and I said, what are you doing here? And he said, well, I just want to be here when you finished. No matter what, I don't care. You did it. No matter if you mm-hmm. passed or failed. And I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, well, I don't think I passed. But, and he said, I don't care. You did it. And that's, you know, huge. So for two days, I, you know, sweated. More, more <laughs> yeah. stressed to it add to awful. it. It was awful. Yes, it was awful. And I remember I was in the kitchen and he was on the computer and it was early. And he kept just refreshing the page, refreshing the page, refreshing the page. <laughs> and I thought, you're killing me. I don't think I want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> and he, he just looked at me and I, I knew that I didn't pass it. <sighs> and I turned and he refreshed it one more time and he goes, you pass. And I said, there's no way I passed that. He said, well, come look at the computer. You pass. And I thought, oh, my God. I did. Wow. So I honestly still to this day can't believe I passed it. I can't believe that I am finally a nurse, what I always wanted to do. I got a job that uh, the end of November that same year, and I've been there ever since, and I love it. I'm a postpartum nurse at Moses Taylor in Scranton. I absolutely love it. I love teaching new moms how to handle their babies and how to learn and grow and change for them and be better. So it's been fabulous. Love it. You never know where you go when you see these babies that you you saw mm-hmm. uh, be born or be at that time, and then the years are starting to go by because now how many years have you been a nurse? Four years. I can't it's believe excellent. it. From the very beginning when you found out you had MS and, and all of these amazing things that you've accomplished, I mean, this is just an amazing <laughs> story in general. Were there any times where you were just kind of sitting there by yourself and you said, I just can't do this anymore? This is unbelievable. I, were there any times you just wanted to throw your hands in the air? Honestly, I don't think so. No. I don't think I, I don't have it in me to give up and to give in. I remember when I first found out that I had MS, my mom wanted me to go for these support groups and you can find them all over for many different things, cancer and, and MS and lupus and all this stuff. And she said, you really should go to a support, support group. And I said, um, I don't think I want to do that. Because I think that if I do that, I will give up. I will give in. Because I don't, I don't have the same attitude as a lot of these people do. They get together, and, it's, and, I, and it sounds really harsh, but it's woe is me, and I don't, ha- don't want to do that. Because that's giving up to me. Mm-hmm. And I can't go there. I, don't have, you know, I have too many lo- uh, years left in my life, and I just can't give up. So I think, I, I don't know. I don't think that there was ever really a day that I just... That's why I wanted, I wanted to get in. Angela on the show because anyone I listening, I tell you, you can't. You, yes, those groups are good if if they're sitting around and then they're talking about what they can do positive, right? But, but so many times they're not. Doesn't happen. Yeah. So I just I needed positivity, and I even now. I mean, I I of course I'm married, so that's not an easy thing, and I have we have four children all together, so it's it's a whole different thing. My oldest is in college and my youngest is in kindergarten. So mm-hmm. it's a tough thing. It's, you know, it's and then we have two in between. So every day is a struggle. Every day is, is stressful, but it's nothing ever says to me, give up and stop and just stay in bed today. I need to be around people that are positive and, 
and you never you don't you don't complain. You yeah. Never, oh, why what bother? What is that going to do? <laughs> well, many people do anyway. <laughs> I know, but where does that get to them? It gets it's all it's such negativity, it, and it I is. it just brings me down. So I actually, you learn as you grow to stay away from people that bring you down. And I, you know, I have relatives, I have family, I have I have friends that just have that negativity and I just I see them and I just stay away as much as possible I love them all but I can't be part of that Mm -hmm. it just is not in my makeup in the olden days when there used to be picnics I recall that we would go to and we would talk about all the fun things what the children were doing and it would be all just really good topics and now I just feel whenever there's a family reunion or get togethers all everyone's doing is sitting around talking about their sickness and <laughs> and and yeah. there's nothing fun anymore. So it's like, wh- yeah. wh- I don't even want to go half of the time because I know that that's what it's going to be. Right. And that is, that's tough. It's, and, you know, obviously through the years, I mean, there have been so many other horrible things. Cancers have just sprung up like crazy. And I think every day when I wake up, instead of giving up, I say to me, it could be so much worse. And it's not. So I just thank God every day that... It's not worse. It's more like an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. That's, yep. has, has there ever been a time, I mean, as a human being, you know, I, I'm going to presume this. And if I'm wrong, please smack me. <laughs> um, you know, you, you get a little sad. You get a little upset, you know, especially finding out bad things or whatever. You sure. know, how do you personally work yourself through those things so you can keep on that attitude of gratitude, so you can stay positive? Um, I think that. I guess I just see all that I have and all that I am thankful for and the things that it could be. And and I I know people that have, I have a good friend that I went to school with that has a daughter who on Christmas Eve about three years ago found out she had T-cell lymphoma. And I bring myself back to that all the time. How much hurt and pain that caused that family. And she's okay right now. But gosh, I could have it so much worse. And so I always think, I wake up and think, okay, well, today's Monday and, you know, this is what I have to do. I'm, I could be diagnosed with so many other things and I can't, I can't stop because of what I have. I'm going to push through. And if it helps someone in my life or someone that I come across, even one person, that's fabulous. I love it. What do you do to keep positive? I mean... Do you read books? Do you listen to anything? It just comes from within because we always talk about fear, Tom. Mm-hmm. And fear is a terrible thing. And and I know I'm the biggest baby. If there's one <laughs> thing that I feel wrong on my insides, I can't think of anything else. But that's not what you do. And I love that attitude. Yeah, well, that's why we're asking those questions. Yeah. Well, there are days. I mean, certainly I have probably what everyone has where you enable things to happen. You enable the, the people, the negativity to come in sometimes not on purpose, but it just does. And I get so mad when that happens. In fact, it happened to me yesterday. I was so mad. I told my husband last night, I said, I'm so mad that this happened today because I enabled this person to get to me. Mm-hmm. And how do I fix that? How do I change this so that it doesn't happen again? And I, I try to learn from that. I do read some. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have a lot of time to read. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, you know, when I do things that make me happy, uh, I was talking before about crocheting. People laugh at that. I'm 40 years old. I crochet, whatever. It's fun. I love making things for people. I make, you know, the baby gifts. My, my youngest sister having a baby. I'm, I just crocheted a beautiful little sweater and a hat and all this fun stuff. That's what makes me happy. So that's what I do in my free time. And that actually keeps me up, uplifted. It makes me happy. Happiness. Yeah. Great topic to talk about when we come back from our last break here. Uh, this is Make a Change on 94.3 FM. The Talker, our special guest today, Angela Callahan. I'm Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin. Of course, if you have any questions for Terry, you know, feel free. Give her a call at any time at 866-646-3374. Check out her webpage at MadariClinicals.com. And uh, we will be right back on Make a Change. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. 
They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MadariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. And we're back on Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I am Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin, and our special guest in studio today, Angela Callahan, all about making changes. And this woman has made many changes in her life as her life has been going through. And uh, from being diagnosed with MS to a divorce to a now happy marriage. How many kids do you have now? We have four altogether. Four kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, She put herself through school. Uh, a couple times, <laughs> yes. uh, but now is uh, what? What's the actual title of that? That you are? I am a. I have a. I'm a. I have a BSN, so I am okay. a registered nurse. Registered nurse with a bachelor's degree. Yes, and she works with uh, with with women who just had babies and teaching them how to. Ch- and I have to say, when uh, when my wife had our first child. I, I was an idiot, you know, and my, my <laughs> wife was, of course, all kind of drooling on herself right after the baby yeah. was born because mm-hmm. of the, sure. what she had to go through. And uh, they said, all right, dad, time to change the kid. And I'm just like, I've never done this mm-hmm. before. Yeah. So thank God there are people like you, because yeah. I looked at that, that woman and I said, I need diaper changing 101, please. And uh-huh. she was so cool and so nice to help me out. Yeah. And uh, so I, what you do is, is such <laughs> I'm a rewarding grateful. job. Yeah. It is. I love it. I absolutely love it. every day of my job. And just meeting so many people. And of course, we have sad st- stories, too. Um, you know, we ha- we just have people that are rape victims and very young. And it's just sad. And you just wonder, gosh, you know, how are you going to change your life from now? You know, and, and either give this child a happy life and raise it or give it up for adoption because you are 13 years old. Or, you know, that happens. And it's sad. It's hard for me to let go of people because I always want to know how they did, where they went. Uh, But I do meet people that say, I remember you, which makes me feel so happy. I love it. You know, that means I made a a change in their life, which is exciting. And that was something we said right before the break that you said uh, with this attitude of gratitude that you have. You know, you always look for the positives and you always try to be positive and and you learn when you're not positive on how to become positive on that, which is something Terry and I talk about constantly. It's when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Yes. What things do you do today that make you happy? (laughs) <laughs> well, this is, this is, well, this is a loaded question. Yeah. This is definitely a loaded question. Uh, I don't. Things that make me happy are honestly, I love just being home. I love just doing things at home, creating, showing my kids how to make things and how to do things and just sitting on the couch and watching football with my husband and just being there. I don't I don't need external things to make me happy. I just look around me and I, I just love everything we have. I'm, you I'm, love life. I love life. I'm happy with everybody, you know, in, in my family. So, of course, there are days that I'm not happy with everybody <laughs> and I run upstairs <laughs> and I shut the door. <laughs> but, you know, seriously, it's just, I don't need to go places and be gone all the time and mm-hmm. go here and, and buy this and do that. Of course, there's times that you have to, but I'm happy just to be home. I'm happy to bake and have my son sit there and play on the computer or play, you know, I don't know. I don't, I do not take time for myself really. Um, specific one-on-one time with myself until recently I did actually just, uh, join a gym. So I'm trying to do that because I'm trying to just have that hour of time for myself, even if it's a couple of days a week, but it's hard. I I don't have, I work nights, so I don't have a lot of time to do that. Mm Mm-hmm. But. Well, the reason why I said it was a loaded question, because we, we, we're noticing a common thread. I don't know if you've picked this up, Terry, but there's a common thread upon among people who have this internal happiness that you have, this internal gratitude. And, and from what I'm observing is that these people are extremely happy because they're doing for others mm-hmm. almost constantly. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's why I asked you in the very beginning of the show. I don't know if you remember what kept you going. What mm-hmm. ma- And you said my kids, mm-hmm. you know, you did it for your kids. You're doing things for your husband, for your family, for the house, right. for 
It's and a, when she crochets, she's making all these little baby hats that she's given to these newborn <laughs> yeah, infants I leave them in the there so you don't so even that, stop at home yeah, for no, them. I, yeah, I leave cool. them in the nursery so we can give babies just, you know, something cute for the first couple of days of life. Um, you know where I learned? I, I do want to say I learned all that from my mother. Growing up with three sisters on a farm of all this craziness, she worked full time, he worked full time. We just never stopped. Mm-hmm. And we did not go places because we always had obligations at home. So we had to learn to make ourselves happy with what we had. And probably one of the biggest, most fun things growing up was when we got a new refrigerator. And I know this sounds funny, but we got to play with the box. Oh my gosh, I love that. I know exactly (laughs) what you're talking about. It was the best. Yes. So we got a tarp out, we put it in the front yard, we put the tarp off over the box, and we (laughs) cut, you know, little doors, and we colored it. That thing lasted until it was mush from the rain. (laughs) I don't even know. But those are the times I remembered. And even with my kids as they were little, and even with my son now, I always say to them, make something out of nothing. You were creative. That's important to me. And they're like, what do you mean, mom? And I said, because here's a box. Go, go make something. Go figure it out. And my son's great at it because he makes robots out of boxes and all kinds of stuff. The girls were a little harder to, to you know, get going, but make something out of nothing. If you think about that, that's huge. And mm-hmm. if people could just adopt that sometimes in their lives, they will go very far. I think that's what our generation is missing right now. We yeah. think we always have to put the computer in front of them, or they have to have all these mechanical. But the fun times were. Yeah. And I have to say, even when my children were small, it was the boxes. They made a stove, and they got just the big spoons and the yeah. pans out, and they'd play for hours. Hours. It's great. It's great fun. Uh, my mother had, you know, she grew up a very difficult life. She had three sisters, and they grew up in a very tough environment and so when I look at her and I see all that she has done and accomplished that's probably where I get it from Mm -hmm. I don't I think if she was a different person I certainly would be a different person Mm -hmm. but you know parenting is huge and and there's a lot of lack of parenting out there and thank goodness I didn't have that but we grew up with strong values and beliefs you know we went to church and that's important just to believe in something you know Mm -hmm. and we always had that so that was helpful. Uh, she, my mother always says to me still, like, I can't believe that you do everything you do and you never complain about it. And again, what's that going to, what's that going to do? You know, you hear complaints from everybody. So I don't need to be one more person to give complaints. It's just not, I don't want to do that to somebody. I don't want to bring someone else down. I'd rather give them something positive to, to think about. How do you do that? How do I th- give them something positive? Yeah. You know, sometimes it's a thank you. Sometimes it's just a, you're doing a great job, you know, especially at work. You're, you thank you so much for everything you've done. And, and people just need to hear that. Mm-hmm. You don't hear that often anymore. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't even Say take much. Say something kind. Smile. It doesn't take much to change a person. Uh, and, and I do, I love, there's a saying or something that says that people don't remember what you say, but they'll remember how you make them feel, mm-hmm. you know, and that's huge. So I try to do that. I don't always do a good job at it, I'm sure, you know, but I really try hard to, to just make people feel that way necessary, know. needed, you know, make them she feel tries needed. Yeah. Yeah. Help them. Yeah. Yeah. Long term goals. Yeah. Do you have any <laughs> long term goals? I'd love to go get my master's degree back to school. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> okay. I'm not because my son's in kindergarten. I can't I can't even think about that right now. Mm-hmm. But eventually I would like to get my master's degree. I don't know. Um, I'd like to. I would like to be an educator more than I am now and in my nursing role, I may, you know, step out of the box and, and do a little bit of clinical nursing or something to, to just be able to teach people. Because one thing in nursing school you don't teach is how to be empathetic and sympathetic to people. You just don't. You learn all the basics and you learn everything in the book, but you don't know. You don't learn all that. And, and life experience is obviously what teaches you that. I think that if I had gone to school right out of high school, I don't think I'd be the person I am today. So, I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, I think that I wanted to always be that, but I'm glad I wasn't. I'm glad I didn't do, I'm glad I went the route that I went because I think that it just made me a stronger person. It made me who I am. So mm-hmm. it all worked out. <laughs> Did you ever think of, uh, you know, with, with the MS and, and the battles that you've had and you've successfully conquered um, with those support groups? 
I know how you feel about them. I agree. Mm -hmm. But did you ever think maybe you could take this positive attitude that you have and bring it to those negative Nellies, if you want to call right, them bring that? it to their attention. No, I actually haven't thought about it, but I, you know, maybe I'll look into that because I, you're right. It could help somebody. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, just. Because I know it's always nice to hear positive. Um, I used to uh, work for a man. <laughs> I still don't know how the hell he does this. But I used to work for a man who was always smiling. Always. Even when the numbers were in the toilet, he was always smiling. And I looked at him one day. I said, John, I said, we're going down the crapper here and you are smiling. So what is, are you high? Are you on <laughs> drugs or something? And he says, no, no, I, I'm just happy. I said, how? He goes, well, I choose to be. Mm -hmm. He said, every day I wake up and I choose to be happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I do that, but by noon I change my mind. <laughs> I said, how do you do that? And it's still, it fascinates me. It, and, yeah. and I'd love for somebody to teach me how to choose to be happy in the morning and stay happy. You don't let things define you. You have to, you know, be who you are and not, you know, like I, I always say, MS does not define me at all. It's not who I am. It's something I have. It's an issue that I have, but whatever. I'm going to get past it. And someday if I end up in a wheelchair or whatever, then whatever, and I'll deal with it then. But hopefully, you know, it doesn't get to that point. Hopefully I can stay, you know, stable enough for my life. We'll see. Hopefully by the time I'm 70, they have a cure. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm Don't hoping. I just love see? this attitude. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You're not allowed to leave today after the show. You just have to stick around and keep hitting me with these positive things. <laughs> yeah. Don't let things define you. Right. Because the minute you do, you're giving in. Well, then let me ask you one really hard question. Okay. Who are you today? I did ask, while she's thinking a minute, how we would title her show, because it will be on YouTube. It will be on MadariClinicals.com. Anyone can hear this time and time again if they want to play it over. But I said, Angela Callahan, how do we title your show? How mm -hmm. would you like that titled? So that people would click on. And it isn't Angela Callahan... MS, right. it, that's, that's what, the, that's what the show is about, but that's not who you are. I don't know. I don't know if I can actually answer that because I think that there's just so many things that I feel I am. I don't know that I could put one word on it. I, I just, I guess at the end of the day or at the end of my life, my, my hope is. She's not a quitter. <laughs> that's for sure. She has a no quitting attitude. I just want to be able to know that I made a change in people. Well, I can promise you this. <laughs> just sitting here today, you've made a change. I can promise you that uh, you've made a huge change in my life today. Uh, whether Absolutely I do anything about too. it is up to me. <laughs> but but uh, thank you. Thank you for, for coming here today. Thank you for being a part of this show. And uh, Before I complain again, I am going to zip. Those lips. No more. Uh, and, and I will be playing this show back over and over and over again. Uh, so thank you for taking so much yes. time out of your day. Thank, thank you, you very, very much for me. coming to come on. And do this and, uh, and don't stop. Please don't stop. We need more people in this world like you. Thank you. And thank you. This is Make a Change on 94.3 FM The Talker. Of course, if you want to uh, hear the show again, hint, 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 Terry will have it up on her webpage, MadariClinicals.com. Uh, you'll also put it up on YouTube. How do people find this on uh, all these shows on YouTube, Terry? Well, they go to, of course, YouTube, YouTube. and then go to Terry Martin, Make a Change. Terry the name Martin, of the show. Make a Change. Just do a search and they'll all be right there. You have your own page. Yes. Okay. And if you have any other questions, of course, give Terry a call at 866-646-3374, 866-646-3374. This is Make a Change on 94.3 FM The Talker. Have a great week. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MadariClinicals.com. That's M E 
D-E-R-I-Clinicals.com or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. The new Radio Bold app for iPhone and Android. Download it now and hear all of your favorite stations and formats. Rock, country, classic hits, top 40, news, sports. Look back into the station playlist. Play videos of your favorite songs. Get artist bios, album artwork, song lyrics. Share station and artist information with your friends. Have it all in the palm of your hands. The biggest thing to happen in radio. Well... Since Radio. Learn more at RadioBold.com.